Hello and welcome back everyone to my channel. In this week's video, I'll be showing you how to do a moody little forest painting. I think you're really going to like this one. But before we get started, please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. They really help out my channel. With that said, let's get started. So we have the standard 8x10 birch panel that I like to use for the demonstrations and some black gesso along with some white gesso and we are going to be priming this board and I also took a sponge from the kitchen. We're going to be priming it from dark to light starting at the top, lightest in the middle and then going back into the darker colors towards the bottom. So I'm really quickly just going to brush on my colors very loosely it doesn't really matter because we are going to be taking that sponge and going over the whole thing to give it a very soft textured blurry effect So now I'm going to take that kitchen sponge and just sort of blot the whole area starting in the middle, which is the lightest, and working my way both up and down into those darks. This is a really great project to do with both kids and other beginning artists because it's so easy to achieve a really great little painting with these simple techniques. And I'm just going to come in here with some more black to kind of darken up the foreground just a little bit. It was looking a little too light. And I'll also darken up the top here just a little. So now we're going to place our trees. We're going to be starting with some very light gray for the ones farthest away. And we're just going to very loosely sketch them out don't care about the detail a lot of this is going to get covered up anyways Remember to keep your trees pretty thin since they are farthest away. And now we're going to come in with a smaller piece of that sponge and just dab the tops of those trees with the same light gray color to give it a soft appearance of leaves and detail in the painting. And now we're going to repeat this whole process again with those trees, but using a darker gray. And we're going to be making those trees a little bit thicker 
taller and have a few more branches and defining features. And now we're going to take our sponge along with that dark gray color we were just using and blotch in some pattern at the base of those trees, making it so they don't look like they're floating in the middle of nothing. And now we're going in with a very dark gray, but you could use black if you'd like instead, to add a third layer of trees in the painting. And these trees are going to be closest to the viewer. So in the foreground, they're going to be thicker and taller, going all the way up off the painting at the top and almost all the way to the bottom of the painting. They'll also have more branches. And now we're taking that really dark gray or black color and blotching the tops of those trees just a little bit to give a few more details here and there. I'll also be doing this again towards the bottom of those trees as well. I think I'm going to blotch in some shadows here behind these trees and let's actually put a really bright light source in the sky, maybe a moon. I think that would look pretty neat. So now I'm going to come in with some white on my sponge and I'm just going to blot in some light coming from back here off in the distance coming through the trees, reflecting down. I think that'd be really pretty. And I'll figure out where to put that moon in a second. Okay, so I'm just gonna put the moon sort of in the middle towards the top here, right about there. That looks good to me. And we'll just have that light sort of coming out and cutting across some of these trees here, really giving off a really bright, almost a glare.
And I'm just going to really quickly put in some white right here and define where that moon is going. I'm going to take my sponge here and just keep working that light, keep kind of having it radiate outwards, really, really bright moonlight just coming across here. So I feel like the painting's missing something. It needs a creature. So let's put a deer in here. So I'm just gonna really loosely sketch the general idea of a deer um, with black paint here. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just wanna get the general shape in. I made a boo-boo but that's okay because I can fix this but I'm gonna have to wait till it dries so now it's dry and I went in with some white and just cleaned up my area and now I can reshape that leg that I goofed on So I'm going to come in here with the sponge again and add in some more of that black in the foreground to make it look like the deer is not, again, floating in the middle of the air. He's actually walking on the ground. So I feel like my deer is not showing up very well. I need to add a little bit of white around him to give more contrast between him and that background. So 
So you don't have to use a deer in this painting if you don't want to, obviously, it's your painting. You could put whatever animal, or none at all, uh, that you choose. You could do an owl sitting in the trees, or um, maybe you want some wolves, or maybe a bear, it's totally up to you. So I personally think that grayscale paintings are really cool. I love them. I think they're just really intriguing. But since this is a tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can colorize this if you so choose. Again, you don't have to, but if you'd like to, go for it. And I'll show you how to color in just a sec. But I'm going to add a little bit of white for some highlights here around this deer. So it looks like that light is sort of wrapping gently around him. So really quickly, I'm going to show you the difference between opaque and transparent colors. Velo Blue is transparent. It allows the underpainting to show through. Um, primary Yellow, uh, is this one is saying that it's sort of transparent, so we'll go with that. But uh, opaque colors would be more like raw umber here, how you can see it hides what's under it. So we don't want to use opaque colors, okay, because they will not allow the painting to come through. So I'm just coming in with some phthalo blue that's been watered down just a bit and we're going to very lightly glaze over the top of this painting to kind of breathe in some color of life into it. Now normally I wouldn't recommend just watering down your acrylics because that will break down the paint and it can actually not look as good. So you want to use a thinning medium for your acrylic paints. Um, I don't have any right now, but I will find some and link it down below along with all the other supplies I'm using today. So I do love this technique because you can put in so many really cool colors into your painting and glaze it in different patterns you could do stripes or circles. It's a lot of fun. And you don't have to do just blue in the sky. You can add some purple if you'd like or some darker blue if you'd like. It's totally up to you. But this is something I wanted to show you guys because you can have a lot of fun with this technique.
Okay, so now I'm going to use a little bit of that yellow and mix it with my phthalo blue to create a vibrant green color. I'll be brushing that in next. So unfortunately, I noticed that the camera can't pick up some of my background that I put in there. Remember the light trees? They're there, but unfortunately, it looks like you guys can't see them. So sorry about that. And now I'm going to come in with even more yellow for the bottom here so that we have a nice gradation from blue to green to yellow. It's really pretty and soft transition. And like I said, you can have a lot of fun with this. You can even do um, purple to red to pink to orange to yellow. You can totally have fun with this and just glaze over a whole rainbow of colors if you prefer. Whoops. Oh, a teaching moment. Okay, just wipe off the excess paint if this happens to you. Quickly wash your brush and scrub that right out. Dab it and it removes all the color. Like so. Super easy. This works because the underpainting was thoroughly dry before we did the glazing. So here we go, we are finished with our moody little forest painting. Remember you can have a lot of fun with this with different colors or you can leave it grayscale if you want. It's totally up to you. Thank you so much everyone for watching this week's episode and I look forward to seeing you next week.